Okay, ready to go? Yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay, good evening, everybody. <clears throat> As you will see shortly, we've made some progress with our our SAD 3LW. Um, we've got the injector pump off. <clears throat> and what this enabled us to do then was to get in here at these nuts on the block and get them, <clears throat> get them removed. Uh, we took off the timing case cover in order to help us to get the, inject the injection pump off. We've taken off the exhaust manifold and the inlet manifold. Um, now, <clears throat> we had to be very careful with that because <clears throat> the inlet manifold is alloy and with age, they're inclined to go brittle. So you have to be very careful of taking them off. We had to apply heat here and here and be very gentle with wedges and, and good screwdrivers and so on. But we managed that all right. So <clears throat> the drive plate, remember I explained about the drive plate, how that helped the, uh, the crane to move. We've removed all the studs except two and we're hoping now that this plate will just pop off. Now what normally happens is the plate gets rusted onto the flywheel and it, it more or less might as well be welded on. So we're going to try now and see can we, can we get it to, uh, to come off. Um, I'll confess we have cheated a bit here by lubricating this beforehand. Good screwdriver in here. Yep. Yeah. And there she goes. Now, like <clears throat> most engineers working on these things, I have good days and I have bad days. I think today is a good day. Now, <clears throat> in letting off these nuts here, I'm hoping that the whole block will come up and leave the pistons and con rods behind. That makes the whole restoration of the engine an awful lot easier. Otherwise, we'd have to drop the sump, uh, take off the end caps from the, uh, the, uh, <clears throat> from the con rods and lift up the whole lot, con rods and all, and then take off the head and push the pistons down from the top in the press and it's a lot of work so again fingers crossed um, we'll try lifting this now and see will the whole lot come up and will the forklift start <laughs> Isn't that amazing? And this engine probably hasn't ran for, I don't know, 30 years or something. No bent push rods, beautiful pistons. Look, the rings are actually still moving. Now you'll see I had this soaked in diesel and that, that helped the whole process. Look, the rings are still free. There's not even that much wear. There's a bit of wear in the piston. That's how we tell the wear, is the gap between the ring and the piston. Okay, the oil ring is gonna need a bit of talking to. But anyway, we'll fit new pistons whenever we're restoring the engine anyway. So, uh, it doesn't really matter what condition they're in. Corn rods are free, the whole lot's free, and of course, the whole engine will now uh, rotate. My, my, my good day continues here. Uh, you'll see that we've got the block off and the pistons uh, exposed. And that saves us a lot of work. We got the flywheel off. It actually put up very little fight. We were able to get it off okay. Once we got the, the air gone onto it, it came off fine. You, you have to walk the flywheel off. It'll not just slide off. You have to do first a bit one side, and then the other side, and gradually it'll come off. So now we're going to try and see, uh, will the crankshaft uh, rotate? So we get our best friend here, the crowbar, put it in there, and away she goes. Right. Now, because we've now got the, the, crank, the um, crankshaft rotating, 
we can position the pistons anywhere we want them and we can get them off and then we go on to the next stage maybe using a hammer and in fact I've, I've made a special drift that goes in there for doing this but I just haven't bothered to look about it up it comes twist number two out then we get our friendly crowbar put it in here Rotate the crankshaft a little bit more. That should be enough. Our friendly wee hammer. Very, very gently. What we have to be careful about here is that we don't damage the, the bush in the small end of the con rod. So we be very, very gentle here. Just tap the gudgeon pin out, being careful not to hit the, um, the small end bush. <sighs> isn't, that, isn't that wonderful? Now, what we're going to do now, believe it or not, is we're going to put the block back down again. But it's easy because we've no pistons to deal with and we're going to use the weight of the block to help us get the head off isn't this super fun isn't it wonderful okay on we go um what we've done is and you might find this um strange we've actually set the block back on again because we want to use the weight of the block to help us whenever we're getting the heads off the head off You'll also notice what we've done is we didn't oil any of the studs. We put no penetrating oil on. The reason being that whenever we <coughs> go to screw, screw the, the, the nut off, the whole stud comes out, which leaves lifting the head so much easier. That's a subtle one for you. <laughs> remember that we had to use this special tool to go in through where the gardener nameplates were to take off the nuts in there. Let me just show around here please John. <clears throat> you remember that the nameplates went on there. So those nameplates are not just for decoration, they're for an, to give space or to allow an opportunity to put in this special bench spanner to undo those nuts there. Second point is the two nuts down here on the long studs, you need a deep 21 mil or 716 spanner uh, socket to drop down there over the nut to enable you to get it off. Okay, so what we're going to do now then is we're going to lift the head off completely. And that'll more or less be um, the majority of this engine restoration done. After, after this, it's, it's plain sailing. So, we go. All right, we wriggle. Well, anyway, you get the idea. <laughs> <laughs> you can cut it with that, John. Ugh. Okay, so we did manage to get it lifted off. Normally, we'd use the fork lifter or a hoist to do that, um, but it just wasn't so convenient today. There you are. There's your original head gasket. We can now see down into the bores. We have the pistons out, so we really are on the pig's back now with this. We live no, we live no bother now. Show that as well, maybe. It's the and the valves and the valves. I get down close to the valves. Presumably they're all black. Yeah. There we go. Perfect. Nice one. Lovely. Good man. Right. Yep. Okay. So we can see there's no major uh, distortions or cracks or problems with the cylinder ahead. I can put my finger down here, even with gloves on, and I can feel a little bit of wear there. Just a little bit. But of course, we'll measure all that um, to see what kind of tolerance we have. 
but I'm not so optimistic. I would say we'll either fit new liners to this engine or we'll bore out and use oversized pistons. We have new plus 30 oversized pistons, so we may well use those. And of course, we'll put on a new head gasket, new timing chain. We'll ticker out the whole crankshaft, check it for, for um, uh, to see is it within tolerance. Maybe fit new shells, whatever. So we're winning, we're getting on well. Thank you so much.